when do you make the decision to do this? So I, I brought this. So this, if you can see right there, boom, there. This is one, this is a, a 50 cal round that was given to me by an SF guy in the Philippines when I was there in 2009. And uh, they had some of the uh, Filipino Marine guys make it for me. So this is the first time I saw, I think, uh, that I remember seeing anyway, a 50 cal, um, uh, what, what would become uh, a 50 cal bottle breacher. Um, and I loved it because it was great, you know, from these SF guys, you know, I love the, um, I love that it was a gift from them and it was still cool. So it means so much to me. Uh, and then I, then I see you on shark tank years later. And, uh, so where did, how did all this, uh, this come about? And now you have all sorts of stuff on your site. This is uh this is the grenade right here, the frag, you know, I love this thing. You know, you've been amazing to, to me and, and my family as I've gr grown this, uh, you know, the, this business as I've, as I've transitioned, um, and everything you do is so top notch. If people can see that right there, everything from the, the boxes and the, the packaging, uh, to the actual, you know, products, like how did you come up with this, this idea you know, right here? for these, and then take that extra, that step to find out how you get on Shark Tank and then make a deal on Shark Tank and yeah. then keep moving forward and crushing it. So how, uh, how did that all come about? Yeah, it all came about. Um, I actually got the idea from the same place that you did. Um, my little brother, is a, he is a Marine helicopter pilot. He went to the PI and brought me back a real generic 50 cal bottle opener, just like you had. So I don't know if it originated there all the research that I've done and all the stories I've heard are point to, you know, that's where it came out of. Uh, and so all my buddies, they loved it. You know, they'd come over to my house, we'd drink beers, we'd watch UFC or whatever. And they were always like, Oh dude, where can I get one of those? And so, um, I was, you know, I was like, well, unless you go to the Philippines, I really don't know, but, um, th that'd be a good place to start. And then a couple of years later, I was like, you know what, those are cool. I bet I could make, I bet I could make one of those and I bet I could make it better. And so I started working on, I took, I took the one he gave me, I painted it black, um, at SEAL team three and Delta platoon, our platoon logo was the Punisher skull. So I took a little white Punisher skull. I put it on the black, um, spray painted 50 cal bottle opener. I took it to work and my buddies freaked out over it. Um, and they were like, dude, I want you to make me five of those for every guy in my family for Christmas. And that's when the light bulb came on. I was like, if these guys who get stuff given to them all the time, like glasses and jackets and shoes, if they're willing to pay me for them, there's something here. I just need to figure out now how to improve it and market it to other groups and other people. And so at that point, I was, I asked my wife, Hey, would you help me uh, put these online and see if test the market, see if there's a market for them. And so she helped me put them online. And by that point that there were a couple little small, um, like boutique shops that were making these mm. things, but nobody was like putting the detail and work into them that we were, everybody was just like, um, you know, just cut it, make, making them pretty generic. And they were almost, they were all brass. And so I was like, dude, we could really spruce this up quite a bit. And so we just started working on it. We put them online. They started selling immediately. And, um, you know, my, my initial goal was like $500 a month, um, supplemental income. And, uh, you know, I think it was seven months, seven months later, we were doing $22,000 a month out of a one car garage. I was hiring guys from the military to come moonlight and work in my garage after they got off their shift. All the while my wife was running another business. I was working in that VBSS cell. So I still had a date, a pretty demanding day job. We had two small kids and I mean, we were working our tails off, but it, it was right around that point, you know, that I was like, dude, there's something here. This is going to be bigger than supplemental income. And, uh, we were watching shark tank and I was like, you know what? I know that if I could get on that show, if I could get on that show, I was like, we could kill it. Cause I just saw the magic. I saw the growth in this thing. I know that it's a TV show. And so much of it is based on the story. Yeah. They, they want, a good story. They would, they want to get people that watch the story to care about the product and the people behind it. And I was like, I know we could kill it if we got on there, but it was the bullet. And I know that, you know, mainstream TV and media, they're not all about, you know, that type of stuff. So I, I knew that that would be kind of a difficult thing for us, but nevertheless, I went and I did an open casting call. Um, and, uh, they loved it. And, uh, 
you know, they were like, Hey, we want you to move on to the next round. You have a week to make a video. And, you know, within a couple months, Jen and I were, you know, down in, uh, LA at Sony picture studios, actually pitching to the sharks. And it was wild because I was still in the Navy at that time. Um, I was on terminal leave. And so, um, you know, it was, it was kind of crazy how the timing worked out to go from, you know, the SEAL teams, um, right into a business that's, you know, on the verge of just blowing up. That is amazing. So when you go and you, uh, get that casting call with them, are they all there? So you see, you've met, you've met them before you go on the, the show for the real deal. No, you don't. So the way it works and it's kind of brutal, man, they, they bring out more people than they need. And it's just because, I mean, they need to, they're the ones fronting all the investment, right? So you get it, but they, they, they fly people home that they've flown out to LA that never even get to pitch to the sharks that wow. happened to a friend of my SF dude. And I really liked his idea and his company, but he didn't get to, he didn't get to pitch. But so me and Jen got out there. The first thing you do is called pre-pitch and you pitch, you do your, you, your pitch to a bunch of like executive producers, directors, et cetera, okay. casting members that they think you're going to project well and make good TV. Then they bring you back the next day where you'll have a chance maybe to pitch to the sharks if things don't go too long. Cause the, like the company in front of us, they went for two hours. Most the average pitch is 45 minutes. So if you get to an eight hour, the end of an eight hour day and too many companies have gone long, they'll just fly you home. Wow. And so, it's a real risk, man, to, you know, but obviously it turned out for us to be a blessing and it went really well. And we got in there and, uh, we were in there for like an hour and 20 minutes and we got to deal with Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary. And, you know, it was just a phenomenal experience. Oh, so that's the filming right there. Yeah. Ah, so they're yeah, filming that. Funny. Okay. Got it. So some people could and think he, they're actually going to film and then they get flown yeah. home. Ah. Well, here it, it goes another step further because even if you film, even if you get a deal, they tell you they're still, they still might not air your episode. Got to edit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy because what happens is you're as an entrepreneur. Now you're forced into a massive decision. You come home and you say, okay, look, this is what could happen. This, they could air this episode and 12 million people might now see our product. And if we're not ready for it, then we miss a ma major opportunity. However, if we buy a ton of inventory and they don't air the show, um, you know, then we just used and wasted all of our, our resources. So you have to make a real, you know, calculated risk as an entrepreneur. And, and, you know, and we definitely did, we, we made, we took the risk that this was going to air. Um, and even then we weren't even close to being ready for, you know, what, what hit us, but we wow. did everything that we to be prepared. And more importantly, we were ready to adapt and, you know, solve the problem. How long do you have between the end of that that taping and then when they when they air it in your case it might be different you know depending on a whole bunch of different factors but for you how long was it between when you did that taping and then when they actually aired the episode for us it was expedited it was rushed i think we had about two and a half months because they were trying to get our episode edited they were trying to get our deal actually signed because when you actually shake hands on tv that's not a real deal um, a lot of deals you see on tv like um, they never get through due diligence where, mm -hmm. which is where accountants and their lawyers scrutinize your books and everything you said to make sure you weren't lying. Uh, and then, um, and, and that goes the other way too, but, um, we, you know, they wanted to make sure, see if we, they could get us on the veterans day special. So we had about, I think two and a half months to get everything ready before the, the, sh the show aired. So you're just making uh, just 50 cows at that time. So you're just making those as many as you can to get ready in that time frame. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, uh, cause I to, to give your audience an idea on a good day, we would make, you know, before shark tank, we were making about 150 bottle breachers. That was a good day. Um, you know, when we woke up the morning after shark tank, um, we had 60,000 units to make. Um, we had 20,000 <laughs> emails. I mean, it was just like, and that was with our website crashing, um, within seconds of it airing on the East coast. Cause you, you'll do an e airing on the East coast, then it comes to central America. And then you got a West coast area. The East coast is always the biggest, but our website crashed after seconds of it being on the, uh, airing on the East coast. And thankfully I'd learned from the seal teams. One is none, two is one. So 
we made sure that we had a backup website to collect sales in case the website did crash. And so we had our Etsy store up. We had a banner that was already made, like, hey, if the site goes down, throw this banner up on the website. Hey, go over to what you know, Etsy, Bottle Breacher, um, and and purchase a gift. So we were still able to collect sales, um, but some of that military training was already coming in handy. 